Um, okay, so first uh, first item of business. Um, hopefully, you did get my email. Um, I deleted uh, uh, Monday's video on accident, and here's what happened. So yesterday, when I was recording, and I went to go and open up Dreamweaver, instead of going to all apps, what I did was uh, I was so used to going and signing out, and I wasn't really thinking. And so I signed out of the computer during lecture. <laughs> it was awesome. So when I signed back in, I went to go delete the recording that I had started. And instead of deleting the recording I had started, uh, I chose to delete uh, Monday's recording instead. Yeah, so it, so far it went, it was going really well, Joss. It was, yeah, yesterday it started out. Yeah, yeah. No, will they? Oh, okay. Maybe I'll send them an email with. Um, so, uh, yeah, so basically I told you guys, I sent an email to just watch um, uh, yesterday's video of the installing uh, WordPress and stuff. So, um, the jokes aren't really any that much different, Christopher. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. It's the same script over and over and over again, right? Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, that happened. Um, and let's talk about schedule in terms of um, due by the end of the week, choose your project site, uh, which would be then. Again, how I am going to be grading in this class is you on your choose your project site assignment to leave the URL of your client staging area, right? Um, so if we go to Bella's as an example, uh, you then are going to allow me to view your templates your prototype, and I only need one code repository. Um, I should change my staging area, but um, uh, whatever, as long as I can then go to your code uh, uh, repository on GitHub. Okay, makes sense? Because then what I'm going to do is I am going to go, I've set up my spring 2017, um, my staging area. That then what I'm going to do is when I need to go grade, um, I am going to, let's see, student number 14. If I click on student number 14, right, then I can go view the templates, view the prototype, and then, like I said, I only need one link to the repository. Okay, so uh, Kristen, you've done this absolutely correctly. That's okay. We're going to give you a slow clap. Thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> That's how I'm going to grade. So you don't need to then on all the rest of the assignments, you don't need to post a link to your assignments, right? Because I have your client staging area and week by week as I'm grading stuff, I am going to then just go to my list and go through uh, to grade all you guys. Um, so that being said, then uh, the assignments that are due at the end of next week, by the end of next week, I'm going to expect you to have installed and set up WordPress and created your template files for me to look at, right? Because again, then come start of week four, we are going to start using your template files to create a theme from, right? So install and set up WordPress. Uh, the assignment there, download, upload, and install the WordPress application to your server and subfolder, install and connect WordPress to your database, uh, like we did in the lecture size um, on uh, Monday or yesterday, Tuesday, in the other section, right, that I deleted the video um, from Mondays, right? Link to install, view your protosite link. Um, so again, when you install WordPress on your server, then link to it by the view the proto site. So your install is going to be 
your proto site link that we are going to then slowly but surely make a theme out of. Does that make sense, Anthony? Totally. Totally. Okay. So for then the create your template files, again, what I'm looking for is for your templates, right? You'll need to create a main HTML. You will need to create a home HTML. And a link for your style sheet to work from, right? So basically, your then template system, like I said, should be, you know, um, a project you've worked on in the past that you have then, if you did PHP includes, uh, go back to making sure that the, the, um, the code is just raw HTML for both home and main, right? So again, if you uh, want to, let's say it like this, if you have, let me show you how I made my templates, right? So my templates then were um, Streamweaver open. How many times have I attempted to open Dreamweaver so far? Open Dreamweaver. There we go. So how I made my templates, again, what I am using as my project is I'm using the project that um, we did in the 532 class of the University of Washington where we built um, a prototype to a specification. Here it is in all its glory. And so to then we had these broken out into PHP includes and we had some uh, conditional statements, et cetera. So then to get the code and make this back into the templates, all I did was I viewed page source on the home page, did a select all, copied and pasted that into a file, named it home.html. Same thing for a main page, viewed page source, Select it all, copied and pasted into another file. Does that make sense? So you're going back to uh, files that then have everything from the doc type to the closing HTML tag, right? Because then what we're going to do is we're going to take those templates, add in the WordPress functionality, chop it up into the includes that WordPress requires, so on and so forth. Kind of like what you did in the 200 class. Can someone ask you this question in that class? Okay. Not necessarily. You, it can be just one repository. In other words, here is my template repository, right, that just has those. It's good for an example, like here's what you're going to do for now. Uh, but then you're going to basically take this repository and um, make it into your theme, okay, so that. If we then view code for Protosite, here are the templates, main, home, right? So it's basically a um, continuation of that template. So in fact, let's just do this right now to make sense out of this. So if, thanks for finally starting to open Dreamweaver. So if I go to then my documents folder and I go to my web 170 folder, right? Hi, Analia. Currently, I have uh, created two WordPress installs, right? So if I look at my local view here in the good old Dreamweaver, Right, I have then the local install for WordPress SP1701. And in there, 
we then have a, uh, see, I knew I wasn't crazy. Interesting. There was a 20, uh, a 2017 theme that showed up in my install yesterday, but it wasn't, you know exactly what I'm talking about, um, but it didn't show up in my Monday's one. Dude, okay, maybe I'm going crazy, but still, right? Here is then the template system that we created. So if I open up this folder, Web 170 Spring 1701, that has my templates, here's what we're gonna do, and I'm just gonna do it right now, right? I am then going to move this folder into my themes folder and don't update any links, right? So now I have a theme in my themes folder, Web 170 Spring 1701. It's not a theme yet, but it's my template system that we're gonna make into a theme. Does that make sense? So that's, that's what we're gonna do. So once you get your WordPress install and your templates up and running, right, you might as well just uh, take that template folder and put it in your themes folder, right? Because then we'll be looking for that. In other words, then once we're ready to start making it into a theme, I am gonna open up main.html, right, and save it as index.html. And the first thing that we're going to do then is link to the style sheet file using the WordPress functionality. Okay. Any question on the assignments in this class now so far? What's due this week? What's due by the end of next week? What's due this week? Get your client staging area. What's due by the end of next week? Templates and the, how much can I get for that? <laughs> Check the blue book. <laughs> Install and set up WordPress and create your template files by the end of next week. Okay, here we go. So today what we're gonna uh, polish off talking about was we had installed WordPress, we've set up and customized WordPress options. So if I go to, you know what I should really do is I should really on my uh, little staging area here, put links to all of my stuff so I don't have to keep on doing this. WordPress SP, we're section one right now, right? SP 1701. See, look at this, it's got the, Chris, see this, this one is using the 2016 theme. This is the 2016, isn't it? That's my, yeah. See? But it, it, but it appeared in my install. Well, here, look, if I go to, my God, I hate you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna prove what I'm talking about right now. So everybody just I know I'm wasting time, but I don't care. I have to prove Chris wrong. So yesterday's look at that versus section one, section two, section one. So it's pointless, you guys. So what we want to do now is I'm going to log in. And I'm going to try to remember my password. And if I go to appearance, themes, look at that, active, 2016. No 2017. See, you guys don't care because it didn't affect you at all. So what I want to do today is 
I want to install and use a pre-developed WordPress theme. So we can talk about um, utilizing uh, a pre-existing theme, okay? So if we go to uh, wordpress.org, oops, I need to make sure that those open in a new tab. Um, see, there's 2017, right? We can then find a pre-existing theme to use. Right, so uh, a lot of, um, there. put it this way, there are a lot of free themes out there to use, right? Um, and there are pros and cons to using uh, free themes that you get from the interwebs. One is you have a free theme that you can use, right? But the con of that is when it comes to customizing that free theme, Right, the customizing that theme is the hard part, right? Where um, in terms of if you are going to be a web developer or a web designer, right, you want to design and build custom websites for people, right? If you use a pre-existing theme like uh, one of the clients that I was working with a while back, Two, two broke girls, no? <laughs> That's funny. I always like to see what searches come up. Uh, two, nine, design. So they then, if they're still in business, yeah. So they're over on Pine Pike somewhere over here. And they uh, bought a pre-existing theme by, I don't know, whatever company that made it. Um, so a lot of companies actually make themes then um, that you can buy, like um, we, let's see, uh, artist, artist guide. music business that book artistguide.net so when I was uh, building the website for this guy yep his spotlight is still broken oh what are you doing Lauren God Lauren what are you doing man sorry I know this is on tape um, that's Lauren he lives in Florida um, I met him at Cafe Ladro up at Queen Anne. He changes businesses like he changes his underwear. Now, apparently, this is his new business back there. Um, but he wrote a book called artistguide.net, really good book. Um, he is involved uh, with a company called Leveraging Smart. Um, and so basically he, we bought a theme called South Central WordPress theme by high grade labs. And I don't remember what he bought it for. Um, but here is then the theme that you can buy and uh, you get into the admin and you can customize it via the admin drag and drop kind of stuff. Oh my God, it's a pain in the ass and it is so bloated, right? But I got paid $60 an hour to drag and drop content and make a couple of WordPress sites. Uh, actually, I did like three or four using that same theme. So this one right here is basically using that uh, South Central theme that then we basically customize the colors and set it up. And from this perspective, it does look like, oh, well, that's a good option, right? But again, really super bloated. I spent probably more time trying to fix and wrestle with this theme 
than if I just built something from scratch, right? So there are always going to be the pros and cons of doing that kind of stuff. I would recommend that if you are doing a start to finish redesign for a company, right, like you've been taught in Web 105 or Web 200, that, you know, doing the client survey, information architecture, wireframes, and that kind of stuff all the way through, that you build a custom theme. It's no different than the, like, building a website like you did in Web 200, right? Where the site that you guys did in Web 200, where you did uh, a custom design and built your custom site based off of your custom design and then you had to hand code in all the content. I can build a theme and then put in content using the content management system more quickly than I can build out a, build out a static website like you did in Web 200, right? So um, building a custom application is definitely, I think, the way to go because of the streamlining of the code. You can then actually build what the client needs without, um, here's what I'm saying. Ask Mark Pfaff, who knows Mark Pfaff, right? So Mark uh, got a whole, I passed one of my old clients off to Mark. She was a designer. She was doing some design work for some company. They bought a theme and wanted Mark to like customize it and wrestle with it. And to quote Mark, oh my God, that was a pain in the ass, right? He, you know, it would have taken less time to build it from scratch than to bastardize a pre-existing theme. How many of you have ever taken a template that you got from somewhere else and tried to customize it and it took so long that you were like, oh my God, I should have just built this from scratch, right? Exactly, okay? So uh, I'm recommending you build from scratch. But nonetheless, let's talk about how you can uh, download, upload, make a, um, uh, use a custom theme or use a pre pre existing theme. So if we go to then WordPress, the theme directory here, right? Uh, they have a bunch of themes. Ooh, Jelly. I'm going to have to use Jelly. So I'm going to download Jelly. Downloads. Let's see how long it takes to extract this. Now, who said Bill was using what now to extract zip files? Is that 7-zip? Is it in the applications? It's a download? So I'm going to have to download and extract 7-zip? Seven 7-zip. Seven Ooh. Gonna ask you. Screw the rest of the class. Downloads. Okay. Okay, that's fine. You can just make stuff up. Well, look at that. Nice. Okay, so I downloaded Jelly, right? Um, so one way of installing a theme into uh, your WordPress site is to then. Uh, Documents, open a new window, Web 170, Section 1, WP Content, Themes, right? So right now, here is that template system of ours that um, uh, we're going to build into a theme. I can extract a theme here like this, move it into my themes folder, maybe, there we go, right? And then once it is in my themes folder here, Jelly, I can then kick that up to the remote server. Section one demo, and if I'm here in themes and I refresh, I should see Jelly there, right? So if I activate Jelly now and I go to my site 
yay, Jelly is activated, right? And you can see that it has my recent postings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if I wanted to then as well, uh, let's say I'm going to go to my GitHub. And I'm going to go to repositories and I'm going to go to students of premium design works download because this is basically a theme right that I've built for my school site. If I download that zip. Another way that I can install a theme into my site then is to themes, add new, upload, choose file, downloads. I can upload a zip file. And now I have this theme. If I activate this though, because my theme has a lot of custom functionality in it, right? Uh, especially the way I knew the, do the navigation stuff, you're not gonna see the navigation in the navigation area. So if I visit my site now, I've got you know my recent posts, uh, but the navigation isn't populated. One, because um, I haven't put any pages uh, and then told it to use the navigation structure. Um, this will make more sense down the road. But that's another way of uh, installing a theme. Dashboard. Themes. Add new. They also have in here, you can just go and take a look at popular themes that are out there, etc. Let's install this one. All right, if I activate that, is it site? Yay, All right. Uh, let's see, I should probably just leave this one right now. That looks decent enough, right? So basically, download a pre-developed theme. You can install it by going to the add new menu and you can upload a zip file, right? Or like I said, you can put it into your themes folder locally and then FTP it to the server so you can see that all of these themes now are sitting in um, my themes folder in up on the server right preview blah 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 right again so i um when i was doing my demo funny story i can't read uh for at least an hour i thought i was using a theme called best uh betsy not bestie i'm a little less dixie sometimes right but anyway that is how you uh use a pre-developed theme Yay! All right? See how fun this class is so far? Okay. So what you guys are going to want to do, I would recommend when you do an install, right? Um, we are going to then, when we get to creating content with WordPress, we are going to uh, start to um, create new postings and new pages, etc. You can use the um, the the 
default theme 2016 2017 that comes with wordpress to get all your content set up in other words for a little while what we're going to do is just use a pre-existing theme that we can then see the content that we are putting into the content management side when we start creating postings and pages right before we then take your uh, template and start making a theme out, right? So I would, uh, if I were you, then install a pre-existing theme, kind of take a look around for a couple, um, install it however you want to install it, and then use that as your demo for a while. Okay. Plugins. Let's talk about plugins. And hopefully uh, this should take no more than... 20 minutes or so, and then we can have the last hour here for, for lab. Like I said, that's how a lot of these classes are gonna run. We'll probably lecture for a day and a half and then have half, half the day uh, is lab. So what are plugins, right? Um, plugins are self-contained applications uh, that then basically plug in to WordPress or snap on to WordPress, however you want to talk or however you want to justify it in your own head or describe it in your own head, okay? But if we go to, back to, well, let's go to, let's just log into my school site. Let's use that as a, Totally fun way to put things to load, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, then why does Chris always have to ask questions when I'm trying to load this one? How can I help you, Chris? <laughs> oh, for asking a question for Jaws. So you want to know for a friend? Yeah. Yeah, I want to see it. In other words, um, let me answer your question like this. Psst, you two. Shh. Let me separate you guys. You over there. You over there. I'm going to put you guys next to Dan. Okay. Or put you guys between Trang and Chris. So, to answer your question, because that's what I'm here to do. I, if you'd shut up, I would answer your question. What? I didn't hear. Whatever insult you just threw at me, I did not hear. So all of you guys watching this at home, right? Chris isn't in this section, right? He's in the other day's section, but he's crashing this one because, um, because I said you could, but also, oh, man, his, his ego, just he has to, he, it's like, it's like you guys are a fire hydrant. You know, never mind. That did, that joke didn't go over very well. So let's say it like this: For view, I want to then view your templates. So this is the templates, right? So main.html. If I type in home.html, that answer your question, Chris. So it's got to work. Right. Um, so basically, like I said, if you take your Web 200 project, do the copy and paste of the source code, right? Put it all in. A little folder, et cetera. Right. Um, then. Well, it's going to be in your repository. What do you mean by linked to your style sheet? I'm not. I'm going to do this.
Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to pull a style sheet. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to package it up into a little box like this that has the style sheet and everything. Are you clear on this now? You sure. How many of you are clear on what to do for the templates? I've got one thumbs up. Okay, good. Anthony is with me. If you have any questions, you can come into my office and I can hold your hand while you do it. Well, then you might not get a good grade on it, Chris. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where was I? Plugins. Plugins. Here's the thing with plugins. They are their own applications that then live in a folder called plugins, right? So if we go to our install here, and we look in the plugins folder, right now, uh, WordPress by default comes with a plugin called Akismet. Akismet is a plugin that, so if I go to, Spring Demo Dashboard, plugins, and it also comes with Hello Dolly. Uh, Hello Dolly is the dumbest plugin ever. <laughs> I usually delete Hello Dolly. Akismet, though, is uh, a plugin that hopefully protects your blog from spam. Right? So I don't know how all the magic happens. I'm guessing that there's a database of uh, spammers that if a certain IP address or a certain email or a certain keywords, et cetera, starts hitting your blog and trying to, in other words, uh, oh, one of the black hat SEO tricks um, is to then comment on people's blogs with spam, right? That then links to your websites, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I've <clears throat> tried my best to combat that on my school site, and uh, it can be relatively difficult. So on my school site, I have Akismet running, but Akismet wasn't powerful enough. So I also installed um, a plugin called Cookies for Comments um, that sets a cookie that must exist for a comment to be allowed through, right? So basically, um, the spam bots then aren't on your page long enough, right, to have that cookie be set and whatever, how it responds with the user. In other, guys, in other words, when you guys leave a comment on my site, it takes you 10 seconds or so at least to type in your name, type in your message, and actually leave the comment, right, where a bot is just going to hit it and, and be done. So. Again, I don't know how all that magic happens uh, there, but anyhow. Uh, one of the um, plugins that I've been using as well is this FB code highlighter. So that's where um, it's a little bit old of a plugin, and I've thought about, well, let's say it like this. I've changed to a different plugin on my business site where if I then am having code presented in my page, right here, the look and feel of this code is controlled by a plugin.
WordPress rainbow highlight. So this is the, the newer um, one that I'm using on my site. Uh, there are a lot of other plugins that um, you guys may use, like WP Supercache, right? It's a caching plugin. So like on my school site, um, I have it running so that the, the load on my server gets decreased, right? So when you guys are on my website bouncing around, it'll cache the pages and it won't have to really do another complete server hit to then reload certain pages, right? Um, other ones, WP Page Navi, um, that is the... plug in that controls this stuff down here. Okay. So out of the box WordPress has, you know, basic functionality, but then you are going to need certain plugins to do certain things. That being said, right, you don't need a plugin to do everything. That's where I would encourage you to write your own functions when you are doing things like when um, I originally went to go and pull in a blog posting, right? So uh, some of you guys may have heard this story where I wanted to pull certain blog postings into my services pages, right, by their ID number. And so when I did that, I found a plugin that did that. And how it actually worked was, if I go and edit this page, down here, this is what we call short code. Okay? We're going to use short code here in a minute because we are going to install Contact Form 7. And Contact Form 7 works using short code. Okay? So, uh, instead of using a plugin, I wrote my own function uh, case study to then um, do essentially what a big bloated plugin did. Okay, so you are going to fight the battle of do I use a plugin? Do I not use a plugin? You're going to be using plugins for really big things like contact form seven, right? To, to have a full, fully encompassing contact form kind of set. Or maybe something like I use a plugin called TubePress. That basically I can then through this plugin. link to my certain playlist, my account, right? And then have the option of setting up how YouTube videos feed into my website, right? So this is also a really powerful plugin. Yeah. Yep. So plugins then, um, I have your answer. On my school site here, here's my gradebook plugin. All right, so when I go to upload grades for you guys, basically what I do is I choose whatever class I've set up. I then, so, I choose my spreadsheet file and upload it to my site. Okay. I've modified this plugin. So this plugin so you will see that there's KB gradebook, and there's Mike's gradebook. I started off with KB gradebook, which hasn't been updated in years. Okay? 
One thing I didn't like about KB Gradebook was I didn't get a menu item here in my admin. The menu item was under posts. Okay, so if I uh, hovered over posts, instead of adding a new post or a new page or whatever, I would then have a menu item down here for KB Gradebook. That annoyed the hell out of me. It just did. That should have its own menu item, okay? But again, the plugin hadn't been updated in years. So what I did was I made a duplicate of that. Which now, oh, oh no, there, there it is. So basically that plugin then is this one file. So I named it Mike's Gradebook. This is a Gradebook plugin created from what's his face KB Gradebook, right? The original author of this plugin is. So yes, here is the plugin. I then made changes to it Wait for it, wait for it. I made changes to it down here where um, I deleted the, it used to also come with a widget. Which we'll talk about widgets in a little while. But um, I deleted the way that it added a navigation link under the post menu. And I pulled that out and then added it to um, using the add menu function, uh, added it to the regular part of the menu. Right? So it took me a little while to dig into the plugin, see where it pulled the menu item, put it on the post menu as a sub menu item. And then it took me a little while to figure out how to write its own menu item and then actually hook up the uh, function to then do all that, right? But I learned a few things about WordPress, right? So that's the kind of thing that I've been slowly but surely digging into uh, all the code like that. So the, the long and the short of it is, yes, plugins are just code, right? Always PHP. Always PHP. There might be JavaScript associated with it, right? In other words, you will find plugins that, if and when you download them, will have JavaScript files, jQuery files associated with it, right? Um, yeah, the plugins are basically their own little application that then uh, gets stored somewhere. And when plugins are, like if we look at my plugins page here, uh, you can see that some are saying there's a new version, right? So where a lot of these then, plugins are stored is they are, come on, open and well, let's do this. they are stored under or registered with WordPress's plugin directory. So if an author makes updates to it and uh, uploads, it, you know, uploads the update to 
and the WordPress repository of plugins, you will get a notification in your dashboard that this plugin needs to be updated or could be updated. So the thing is, do not modify plugins unless you are making that, taking that plugin and making a new one out of it and controlling that page yourself. I have had the experience of making modifications to a plugin that hadn't been updated in years and years and years and years. That was on Jet City servers, right? It was on theirs. And then lo and behold, the author made a couple of updates to it. They got a notification saying update the plugin. They updated the plugin and they broke all the changes that we made to it. Okay. Learn my lesson. Don't do that. So that's that's one of the things with plugins. If you were going to modify a plugin, right, you are left with making a new plugin out of it. Otherwise, if you modify an existing plugin and then update it, how are you going to control the, the difference in, in code versions, right? So, does that make sense? So, what we're going to do then is for our website, um, I on my student website, use a plugin, one of the very um, common plugins, Contact Form 7. Okay. So if I look at Contact Form 7 under the hood or in my settings or tools, where is it? It's actually its own thing. Right. So this is where then I can make a lot of different contact forms, right? Oh, configuration errors. So here is then the short code, right? So if I go to, let's say, well, did everybody see that I made my announcement for the Web 210 class? The summer okay so to apply to be a client in this class then you have to fill out a client survey which is basically the client survey from web 105 if i go to edit this page then what you will see on this page is some text, and then a call to shortcode, right? So again, in this text editor here, you cannot put PHP in here, okay? I don't think you can even put JavaScript in there, Dwayne. Do you know? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you have to do if you want to call functions, right, like the case study function, right? So again, if I go to So if I go to my case study function here, get featured case studies, <clears throat> pass an ID, pass an ID, here is then the function function get featured case study turn it into short code case study pass an ID through there so that accesses that function so what we're going to do now is in your demo here visit site I don't want to visit site Plugins. If you are going to be using a really 
familiar plugin. You can go to add new, and if you know the name of it, contact form seven, right? You can hit this, install now. Installed. Go back to the plugins page. Contact form seven. Activate. It's now activated. So now this shows up there, right? Where <clears throat> I can, I have a default contact form already made for me, right? That is a basic contact form. So here is where then in this plugin, it has its own admin section. So one of the things about plugins then is they also write admin panels, admin sections into your dashboard. So clients and you can do things through the admin panel. Make sense? Okay. So If now this is installed and I go to my server, you can see that contact form seven is now in my plugins folder. So just the same way that you downloaded a zip file, extracted it, put it in your themes folder for the theme, you can do the same thing with plugin. Right? So for instance, if I wanted to add Mike's grade book to, to here, I could do one of two things. When you do an install, those folders are part of the install. Is that what you're asking? Should be in your WP content folder. Okay. So now, if I wanted to go to my downloads here, extract Mike's grade book. Go to my plugins folder, drag that into my plugins folder. It's here. I could upload that to my server. And when I go to my dashboard, wrong website. Apparently, I closed the window I need. So these. There we go. No, I didn't close. So if I go to my plugins here, now spring plugins spring. It should show up. Hmm. Sometimes they don't. If I go to add new though, and I want to upload plugin, choose file, 
I can choose that zip folder, install, now let's see if it shows up. Install failed, why? Delete it out of there. Go back here. Add new plugin. Upload. Choose file. Open. Install now. Plugin installed. From my memory, uh you might have some problems when you put stuff in your plugins folder and upload it it may not show up for a while um but here's that that plugin right that mike's grade book so those are the th essentially three ways just like your themes that you can um use plugins or install plugins so now that we have contact form activated right uh what we don't have is we don't have a contact page but we have a sample page. Let's just go and edit that sample page. We'll make a contact page later and add our menu system to it. So here is our sample page. If we go and view this page, yay, it's there. We might not be able to find it via our navigation um, because we haven't set up our menu system correctly yet. But if I go to pages, I go to sample page, and I go to all my contact forms. If I take this short code, copy it, put it down here using the visual portion of the editor. We'll get into that later. I update this page now and I view page. I should have a contact form down here. Okay. Hold on. That if I went to my contact form settings here and I edited it, it should be sending it to my Emson Cooler Premium DW. So if I go back to view this page, <clears throat> testy mip tools. Um, all right, it does redirect. Um, subject testing this. Oh, I didn't mean to send it right away. Well, <clears throat> whatever. I sent off an email before I really meant to. Uh, but that's basically how to um, utilize a plugin. Not all plugins work that way, right? And again, um, there are a multitude of plugins like this Google XML sitemaps, which will create an XML sitemap out of your site, right? That will then um, um, basically coordinate with Google and communicate with Google, et cetera. Okay, so, make sense? Lab, 
Labrador. Um, so you right so you did this and when you view the page it doesn't show the whole contact form correctly oh then you might have some kind of error in your theme or something something weird don't worry about it yeah yeah uh, any questions?